<laughs> By a show of hands, how many of you listen to music while studying or doing homework? Okay. Imagine it's 12 a.m. and you just sat down to write the paper that's due tomorrow, and your favorite song comes on. After four minutes, you're still staring at a blank piece of paper. But it's okay, because now Rihanna is telling you to do your work, 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 work. <laughs> And after another four minutes, you're still staring at a blank piece of paper. Okay, give yourself some credit. You did write your name. It's going to be a long night. More often than not, listening to music while studying is more detrimental to students than it helps, which is what I believe students should stop listening to music while engaging in their studies. After extensive research and a lot of personal experience, I have found many negative effects to listen, uh, listening to music while studying. First, I would like to address some misconceptions about listening to music while studying. The so-called Mozart effect, in which an early experiment gave individuals who had recently listened to the famous composer um, enhanced spatial rotation skills. In this experiment, when sub subjects stopped listening to Mozart and were asked to cut and fold paper, they performed better than when listening to other music. However, according to editotopia.org, it is suggested that this was incorrect. The improved performance actually had to do with the preference of sound one listened to before engaging in the work. It has been proven that doing a task, such as listening to music, before engaging in the vocal task causes increased arousal and, perform and performance is improved. Music has a profound impact on our state of being, altering everything from our mood to our heart rate. Music can relax, energize, or depress us. Medium levels of arousal are ideal for study, not too agitated and not too relaxed. Music can be an effective tool in leading students to get to that level, however, should be done before studying. Another misconception is listening to music you like or are familiar with. Many people say if you know the lyrics, you will not get distracted by them. However, according to a study conducted at the University of Wales, listening to like or dislike music showed the same results, which were both worse than listening to no music. According to At Work, Do Headphones Really Help? an article in the Wall Street Journal, a series of Taiwanese studies showed that workers who either loved or hated the music being played where they worked scored lowest on a test on test of attention compared to workers who did not have strong feelings about the music or who were in room, or who worked in rooms without music. People naturally pay more attention to music they strongly like or dislike, hurting their ability to focus. Another one of these studies showed a strong link between listening to music with lyrics and decreased focus. The article went on to say that music with catchy lyrics causes our brain to focus all its energy on blocking the vocal stimuli from the song, preventing it from concentrating at the task at hand. Listening to music with lyrics was linked to lower scores on tests of concentration in a study of 102 college students published online in early 2002 by the journal Work. The fact that the fact the fact music with lyrics in, in fact music with lyrics impairs comprehension according to Dr. Nick Perham. He says you have semantic information in the lyrics and semantic information in the reading. So if you can understand the lyrics um, it will impair your performance on the reading. According to Clifford Nass, professor at Stanford, listening to music with lyrics will have problematic effects when writing or reading, and probably less of an effect on math when you aren't use, using the language part of the brain. <clears throat> the prefrontal cortex, the brain's control center, must work hard, harder to force itself not to process any verbal stimuli, such as catchy lyrics, that compete with the work you're attempting, says Dr. Eastman. More, more cognitive work required to screen out the unwanted input, and fewer cognitive resources remain for the task at hand. The longer you try to concentrate amid competing distractions, the worse your performance is likely to be. Attention takes mental effort, and we can get mentally tired. A 2007 study conducted at Stanford used brain images of people listening to short symphonies. The researchers showed that music engages the area of the brain involved with paying attention, making predictions, and updating the event in memory. Most significantly, it showed a peak in brain activity during a short period of silence in between musical movements. So basically, our brain functions best in silence. All in all, listening
listening to music while engaging in a task is multitasking. Multitasking results in slower mental processes. A study at the University of London found that participants who multitask during cognitive tasks experienced IQ scores that declined or were similar to what they'd expect if they had smoked marijuana or stayed up all night. It showed people drop an average of 10 to 15 points off their IQ when they multitask, according to learningfundamentals.com and talentsmart.com. Multitasking causes lack of focus, memory impairment, and increased stress. It was long believed that cognitive impairment from multitasking was temporary, but new research suggests otherwise. Researcher at the University of Sussex in the UK compares the amount of time people spend on multiple devices, such as texting while watching TV, and MRI scans of their brain. They found that high multitaskers have less brain density in the anterior cingulate cortex, a region responsible for empathy as well as cognitive and emotional control. While more research is needed to determine if multitasking is physically damaging the brain versus existing brain damage that predisposes people to multitasking, it's clear that multitasking has negative effects. In fact, only about 2% of the population are super multitaskers, and it's sort of a genetic gift. Most of us do not have this gift. These people have distinctively, distinctively different brain structures. They are truly able to do multiple different activities at the same time without losing efficiency or quality, according to CNN.com. However, if you absolutely need to listen to music while engaging in your work, I suggest listening to quiet, slow-paced instrumental music. According to the article Fast and Loud Music, uh, disrupts reading comprehension. Listening to background instrumental music is most likely to disrupt reading comprehension when the music is fast and loud. Also try to avoid music that gets loud and then soft repeatedly. This fluctuating volume can be distracting. If you're really set on listening to music while studying but know your focus will probably be divided, choose classical music or more acoustic music with minimal words to distract you. Movie scores, which typically consist of a bunch of or Orchestral pieces may also be a good choice. Today, it is easier than ever to bring your music with you wherever you go, since music has been, become inherently portable. We listen to music while we walk, cook, drive, to when we want to feel happy or relaxed. Although music has become a fundamental part of our lives, I urge you to turn off your music next time you sit down to study.